Here's a low poly deer head 3D model that I found at a place called Crezilla. It's a public domain model and it's a blender format. So I opened it in blender and I know that I can do work over here in blender, but I don't really know blender. So I export it out as an OBJ file cause I know that fusion can open that. Uh, so now I have a, a OBJ file of this and why I need to work on this is because I'm going to get rid of these antlers because uh, I'm going to use real antlers for my shaman head. So I converted it over to a surface and I started deleting out um, deleting out the surfaces that I didn't need. Like I took off the antlers and eventually I ended up with this model here. And I took it out. <clears throat> I exported this out as an OBJ file and opened that in a program called Pepacura. Pepacura is a program for doing uh, folded paperwork, folded paper artwork. So you basically open up a STL file or an OBJ file and you can uh, basically you can unfold it and it creates a foldable model that you can fold up and make a 3D, uh, you can make a real model out of this with paper, but we're going to use uh, steel. And this is actually a really good, <laughs> this is actually a really clever program because it figures out you know, if I if I cut this out on paper, I could fold this up and make this deer head model. And you're seeing over here, these little things are tabs. Well, we're not we're not tabs is for gluing it together. So we can come over here and we're going to turn off. They're called flaps. We'll turn off the flaps. We're going to turn on the fold angle. All right. So we got the fold angle here. And if you look at this model over here. You can kind of see that these folds have a, 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 a cyan color or a blue color. That distinguishes it from a, a, what different kind of fold it is. So everything is, it's either a mountain fold, which is, this is called a mountain fold right here because it forms a mountain. This is called a valley fold. So I don't want to cut out this on a piece of steel, but what Pepecura really excels at is I can come over here and start splitting these faces out and I can split it over here and what you'll see is like I'll I'll split out this this top part of his face so I want to cut this part out here and I'll cut it out there and I'll cut it out here. okay so there and then I'll cut this one and what you're seeing over here is um, this part is is getting cut out so you can also put parts back together. So here's a here's his nose, and if I'm in this mode over here, where I'm looking at things. It, it can I can highlight this is a uh, a portion of the model. And so what I what I did what I ended up doing was I went through here and I figured out if I were to cut this on a plasma cutter, how would I best put this together. So I came up with this, this model here. See if it has a, yeah, I can't. So here's my, here's my work that I worked on. And these are the pieces we're going to cut out today right here. And what you can see is, uh, it doesn't have the angles on there. So let's turn the angles on here. And so these are the instructions for all the folding I need to do. And so you can see it says M for some of these and, and the other ones are V's. So there's a mountain and a valley and that tells me what, which way I need to fold. All right. So I took this file and I exported out an SVG file and I opened it in Inkscape. Uh, let me see here. I think I opened it. Yeah, I opened it like this. So here's my file. Now, I need to uh, see these lines here. They're either they're either mountain or valley folds. And fortunately, this SVG file has all the layers. So if you look over here, I can um, I can like turn off the outside line, and I can also turn on. So here's all the valley bends that I need to do, and here's all the mountain bends I need to do. And then this is the outlines itself.
but I don't want to cut the valleys or the mountain bends. I just want to cut portion of them. So what I ended up doing was I turned off the, these, the outside cut lines and I selected all these. And then I came over here to path and I, uh, where did I do this path? Oh, object transform. Turned on a transform over here. And I, I turned on scale proportionally and applied each object separately. So all these are highlighted. And I ch change the scale on these, these lines to 75%. And what you'll see is these, these lines will change in length. Okay. And if I turn back on the outline, what you'll see is now I, I, now I have a outline with a bunch of internal slots uh, in it and I took this file and I exported this out as another SVG and I brought it into sheet cam and I rotated it in sheet cam and this is this here is the same as uh, this this file here is the parts that I'm going to work on today so you can see that I have uh, some uh, out, outside cuts and when I just did an outside cut since these are actual lines uh, sheet cam puts them right in the center um, I get a little warning up here but I don't care about that all right so let's uh, go over and cut this on the plasma cutter So I found this steel out in the yard. It's been out there for years. It's 14 gauge. It was a little heavy, but it's what I had. And it turns out that that's a pretty good choice for this because uh, I didn't want to blow out anything if I decided to weld out all the seams. So I have sheet cam set up for uh, uh, the best heat dissipation. So all the cuts are separated by at least seven inches, if that's possible. So it's basically going through here and cutting out all the slots. And the more I use this Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro, the more I'm impressed at how well it actually works. You'll see here in a minute once we cut the. Uh, with these profiles out, you look at the dross on the backside. There's literally none. Clean up on all these pieces took me about five minutes to do. So we're almost done here. Here's the back side of all the pieces. And I'll show you the dross here. You can kind of see that there's almost there's almost none. I cleaned that up with a wire wheel and I got my instructions and I started writing down all the bends and the mountains and the valleys that I needed to do. And then the bending began. All the bending for this entire model took about two hours and I just basically used a vise. And because I set those slots at 75%, I could easily bend this with my hands. And I checked everything with a digital protractor and got within probably plus and minus two or three degrees on all the bends. And if some of the bends didn't work right, I brought out some adjustable crescent wrench and that kind of cornered up everything just fine. Then I started piecing things together and it was looking pretty good so I decided well maybe I should just tape it. And then I decided well no I just weld it. So I found the places where the model the model parts met in a very long line and I tacked those together first because that meant then I was able to 
do other, you know, slightly bend the rest of these angles and kind of tack everything together. And it took me about 30 minutes to tack the whole thing together. And I was really amazed at how well it actually fit. You can kind of see here, I have at least six pieces of this model put together. And I'm just tacking up the nose. And the nose part, literally all the seams are right up against each other. And he's pretty impressive. Here he is with his antlers on the shaman uh, frame that I'm working on. And uh, he's pretty heavy because he's 14 gauge. Now he does have a little some problems. I'm going to have to go in here with a with a hammer or the suppliers or something and kind of correct a few of these things and tack it a little bit better on some of these angles. But for the most part, the cuts, the the documentation, the bending, the checking of the angles. I literally tacked this thing together in about a half an hour. It was very successful. But as, as you can tell, I'm very excited here because it worked out great.